The Edge 850 is here. Garmin's newest cycling computer boils down to being a smaller version of its larger flagship, the Edge 1050, with a few more physical buttons. Garmin is known to release product after product with very small incremental improvements over the previous model. So I wanted to see how a 25-year-old Garmin handheld GPS compares to its latest and greatest 2025 cycling computer. 25 years ago in 2000, the Garmin eMap was on the shelves at Radio Shack. It's one of the earliest Garmin handhelds that had a preloaded base map with a more reasonable form factor. Garmin's website said it was an affordable companion the size of a small calculator with an extra large display for showing even more map data. It could be used for automotive navigation and outdoor activities all powered by two AA batteries for 12 hours. It picks up signals from only 12 GPS satellites, no multiband, and no other constellations, resulting in accuracy down to 49 feet. The eMap came with proprietary Garmin data cards with a whopping 8 or 16 megabytes of expandable memory for more maps. I bought those more maps so we can upgrade the primitive base map already on the device. Using a serial to USB cord and after finding the correct drivers, the eMap was finally talking to Garmin map source and Nat Geo Topo. My eMap only had 8 megabytes for more maps. It took 15 minutes to send 4 maps totaling 7 megabytes to the eMap. For comparison, the Edge 850 has 64 gigabytes of storage. You can send entire continents of extremely detailed topoactive maps to the 850 over Wi-Fi instead of creating a course on a mobile phone and syncing it with one click to the modern devices. With the eMap, you need to convert the course to a route which limits to 50 route points. The 50 route points are distributed to try to keep the shape as accurate as possible. There's no turn by turn here either. Three hours to download 12 gigabytes of map data is still ridiculously long to wait for maps to download over Wi-Fi. Before starting out on this little loop around the airport, I noticed that the eMap had the map display correctly oriented towards the road I'm going to travel and the 850 was showing a more northerly direction. My goal was to highlight the more significant boost the eMap had along its route. I'm approaching a very sharp bend with an uphill section with decent tree coverage. I was really surprised how well the eMap tracked here compared to other sections of this route. The 850 is bright teal and the eMap is dark blue on these maps. Here's a fast downhill section with a roundabout and a bridge. It, it seems like the eMap is recording around a 5 second interval. Approaching the roundabout, the eMap takes off onto the interstate and then comes back together with the 850 on the bridge. It's partly cloudy out and in the early days of GPS devices an unobstructed view of the sky really mattered. There was little to no tree coverage going through this business park but the eMap jumped around on a grassy field and in a parking lot before coming back in check and then bounding around again. This zoomed in aerial shows the accuracy of the Edge 850. The correct lanes and the exact position in those lanes are recorded as I rode through this intersection. The Edge 850 can record even more data points with a 5 Hz recording in specific mountain bike profiles such as downhill and enduro. Cycling around these hangars in this business park filled with hard surfaces, the eMap performed decently, showing me only on top one building. On this long straightaway, both units lined up. Auto pause is an underappreciated feature that is not obviously found on the eMap. This is the Dick Sporting Goods headquarters where the executives have their own hangars directly connected to the airport. I guess so they can fly out to Garmin and discuss what features they're not going to include in the next GPS. This sharp turn at the airport went haywire for the eMap. The glare on both units is bad. It's hard to record a non-glary image. The weather radar feature is actually quite useful. I only wish it was a layer on the main map page and not a standalone feature. All in all, after cutting corners and adding extra zigzags, the eMap came in very close to the distance and elevation of the 850. I was really expecting to see more of a difference here. Since the distance and elevation basically lined up, I wanted to see maybe it was just the clouds affecting the accuracy of the eMap. So I went out to Ohio on a very sunny day, this time I had the Edge 840 and the Enduro 3 watch. Out of the 40 some miles of gravel, this gravel downhill here highlighted the differences in all three GPS's.
The Enduro 3 being one of the newest smartwatches from Garmin really struggled. As you can see, the yellow line here is completely off the road. The teal line is the 1040, which was right lined up with the gravel road. The dark blue line was the E-map. As you can see, it actually came back online towards the bottom of the hill, where it took longer for the Enduro 3 to even match up. The E-map is really not that terrible, and the Enduro 3 is connecting to dozens of more satellites from Russia, Europe, GPS, China. Garmin is slow to roll out new features to its cycling head units, with almost no competition until the mid-2000s. Garmin is finally being pushed a little due to other solid options out there. Over these last 25 years, Garmin not only created a smaller and faster device, they improved antenna design and battery life, they worked on a whole mapping ecosystem, created Garmin Connect, and pumped out numerous other products in a whole different disciplines. Nowadays, you can connect an in-reach satellite device when you have no cell phone service to your bike computer and continue to receive messages all through Garmin. I do want to mention it did take Garmin a long time to finally update its user interface on GPS units. Pages such as the trip computer and elevation were reused for many years looking like an old calculator, all while the map drawing and address searching lagged behind in speed to cheap Android devices. It took until the Edge 1050 series to finally get a snappy bike computer. If it's been a while since your last upgrade, then the Edge 850 is a viable option. If you do like a big screen, definitely go with the Edge 1050. Let me know in the comments below what was your first Garmin GPS. Was it an automotive unit? Was it an outdoor handheld? Or was it the EMAP? 